one of these one of these three people don't fit in this picture. Yes, so you were Yes. All right, here we go. One's a former NFL star turned esports coach. I was getting the stink eye for my wife. She's like, <laughs> what you doing? I'm like, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> One might love his switch more than his girlfriend. Man, I hope she's not listening to this. Please. And one's a dad who can't stop playing Rocket League. These kids these days, they're like, blah, 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 blah. we're used to jump and run. Together, they welcome you to a Grace Gamers Lounge. Ah, welcome, man. Hello, this is episode 76, guys. Wow, we're getting old. You know, I'm getting a little gray here myself. Um, but welcome in to Amon Green's Gamers Lounge podcast. We're in two places. We're actually in the in the podcast world, but then here also live on Twitch at Amon Green TV. So welcome into the stream today. We have a fun uh, show today built for you and a great guest as well. So right now, just a little soft intro to everybody. As you know, the usual suspects, myself and John right there to my left, Ben down there to my right, and my man Clint uh, Ondeberg here from EA Madden. So we're all here just to talk about what we love to talk about. And we're a guy, you know, actually we're both of us, uh, me and Clint, work in the industry. You know, I work, uh, I coach esports at Lakeland University. And then once we get to Clint, he'll explain what he does there um, down in uh, way down in Orlando, Florida, and where they, you know, play, you know, test out and program this game called Madden that's been around for probably a generation now. Um, but uh, <laughs> but since last week's show, you know, we're going to, I'll say for myself, as you can kind of hear, I'm still a little congested. I'm, I'm healing up. I've been sick for the last little week, had a little migraine, a, lot, a tiny little fever, but now starting to work it out, drinking, drinking a lot of fluids, you know, when you get sick. You know, drink a lot of water. And I can't not the energy level is not where I want in terms of hitting the weight room, but hopefully it'll be there soon. And then, uh, but also was excited to lay low and watch NFL and college football kick off this past weekend. Some crazy games, exciting games. I say that some of the biggest games I was able to watch. I know at the college football level, I watched Oregon go into the horseshoe and beat up the buck and uh, the buckeyes i was like well i was definitely uh, surprised uh by the way oregon came in there and kept their composure because you know road games in college football can eventually get for the away team get out of control um because obviously it's it's not their home field it's a, a tough crowd they're yelling and screaming and just making things hard for away teams but that game was more, I say, Oregon Ducks kept it under control and uh, was able to hit their offense, play their defense, and come out with a win against a, a highly touted and highly ranked Ohio Buckeyes team. And I'll say probably this would be their motivator to stay undefeated, obviously, to get to the college playoff uh, moving forward from here. Because as we know, there has, I don't know if it hasn't been, John, two teams or two lost teams um, in the playoff oh, yet. Been a two -loss? I don't think there's been a two loss team, no. No, so yeah, it hasn't been right. It hasn't it's been, been one loss, right. It's been one loss, but no two loss. So Ohio State definitely is going to be motivated to uh, keep their their record, you know, at a one loss to get to the playoff for the Big Ten and be one of the Power Five schools in itself. So I was able to do that, enjoy that, and of course, watch some crazy NFL ball between you know we got Packers not looking like the Packers. They didn't look normal. They looked a little bit off uh, against the Saints. Saints look great with uh, Jameis Winston and. Him being the starter for the first time, you know, in New Orleans, and for them to have go to him after Drew Brees for all these years, and and J and Jameis basically played well, played great. Uh, you saw other games. I watched the Chicago Rams uh, Sunday night game too. That was, you know, was kind of interesting to see how they rotated with Dalton and uh, Justin Fields from Ohio State, and how they're kind of working him in slowly, but still, you know, giving. Andrew Dalton, his just do being the starter there, kind of saw how that. And sometimes, you know, as a coach, 
he's going to eventually have to make a decision. You know, it's going to be got to be 100 percent donor, 100 percent Justin Fields. And because, you know, rotating, I believe, you know, from a football position, I know rotating quarterbacks, you can't really give, get in a rhythm. You got to make sure you, he gives them opportunity to get in that rhythm. So but it was good football to watch for the whole weekend. So that was my weekend, guys. What about yourself, John? What you got? What you had going on? Uh, I really wanted to sit down on my couch on Sunday and watch like eight hours of NFL football, but I had other commitments. So I was, I was really bummed, but I guess I wasn't so bummed when I saw the final score of the Packers. And then I saw my Vikings uh, lost in overtime to the Bengals as well. So, but Hey man, when the NFL season kicks off, it's so exciting. I did watch that Thursday night game with Brady, man. That was, that was amazing. And the Monday night game had a crazy finish as well. So Right. Uh, yeah, just kind of all about getting that going, and hopefully this Sunday I can sit my butt on the couch for eight hours. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about Monday night, Baltimore and the Las Vegas Raiders. Man, that that game, man. If you're a betting person out in Vegas, you probably would have lost your mind. I know that would have been fun to watch <laughs> in Vegas and uh, frustrating. Right at the same same time, because when you thought that one player, uh, the rookie receiver, caught the ball, but his knee touched before the ball crossed. You thought it was game over. Then they get the ball. Then it's a false start. Then an the interception. It's like, what the French toast is going on here? Man. What about yourself, Ben? Well, I got to do what John wanted to do, and I planted my uh, fanny on the couch, and I watched NFL all day Sunday. Amon, I got to ask you, what the, what what happened with the Packers on Sunday? I mean, you played a li- I mean, you played right. with Rodgers a couple seasons, too. Yeah. It's just he did not look – like Aaron Rodgers at all. Right. I, I, it was just one of the things that as I thought of, as I sat there and watched it, I was like, you know, all that time away, you know, because he spent most of the time where he didn't participate in OTAs. He didn't participate in uh, – he did do training camp once training camp got here. But it just showed you how important those OTAs are. Even though the OTAs are really built for younger players to develop their skills, rookies to get introduced to their new teammates. But then the veterans have that time sometimes – to work on their timing of routes, <clears throat> especially quarterbacks to receivers, you know, throwing the ball, certain comeback routes, certain dig routes that is all about timing. And just getting that inter- reintroduction to your your former, your, you're not former, but your teammates, you know, like you know Aaron to Devontae and then all their Alan Lazar to all the receivers that they get those reps in that they don't really maybe maybe sometimes take for granted. And those, that's the only thing I saw that was a little uh, offbeat for Aaron in the offense. But as the game went on, you could see him trying to click, trying to get things get there. But uh, as you know, at, you know, as he said in his press conference, it's just one game. And and with that, he got a good, you know, a good game to bounce back on with Detroit Lions. They didn't die easy either. They played till the bitter end. They lost what forty-one to thirty-three or something like that. Um, against uh so so that that game is going to be it's going to be potentially an easy game but still a game you got to get played you know with uh yeah. with Detroit Lions coming in here on Monday night football so they're going to be amped up as well so I just feel like you make all that noise in the offseason and then you can come out and lay an egg like that you can't do that yeah I mean you you set yourself up for the little bit of scrutiny you know with that uh with the way all season went for him and the team but uh like he said he said he's going to look at his mistakes get him corrected and, and LaFleur said the same thing so they being professional about it about getting back on uh on on tune basically and they got this whole week to get ready uh it's only Wednesday so this is week uh, day one of week two for them Wednesday's the start of the NFL new week and then Thursday and Friday and then obviously come Monday night they have a long week to get ready for those Detroit uh, you know, Detroit Lions that are also sitting at 0 and 1, um, but a guy coming in here uh, that knows uh, quite a bit about football uh, himself uh, knows quite a bit about Madden himself because he's one of the heads of a department down there that helps brings the game to life. A guy who I met at a Madden Bowl a while ago and was uh, great to meet him. A fantastic a friend of mine, Clint Oldenburg, also former college football player and former NFL player as well. And, of course, working for EA Madden. Clint, man, how you doing? How's everything been going? Doing all right. We're right right in the middle of what we call our launch window. You know, Madden NFL 22 came out just a few weeks ago. So we're, you know, paying attention to what our players are saying. We're busy, but things are going pretty pretty good. Thanks for having me on your show. Hey, it's been a long time coming. You're welcome. Um, So, yeah, you're saying in that launch window. So August, I believe, correct, August 20th was the launch day. Of Madden, so you're with it. So that window is pretty much what, like a month to three weeks 
uh, from yeah, the, that it's date? About a month. Uh, to, to consider it fairly, really, it's it's that worldwide launch date, which was August twentieth, up through the first couple of weeks of the NFL season. That's when we see a, a big, you know, spike in, in number of players coming into our ecosystem. So that's our launch window, and we have a few other windows, obviously holiday window coming up around Thanksgiving and Christmas and all those sorts of things, but that's not what you're talking about. <laughs> no, well, we're gamers, and a few of us, I'll say I'm one of them. I'm a Matt, you know I'm a Madden guy, uh, and I coach it at Lakeland, and then here in the Twitch chat, we have some, a few Madden players. So, no, of course, that is what we're here to talk about. Uh, but I, I just know, I just remember actually coming down to the Orlando uh, studio, or the Orlando offices a couple years ago, I'll say about four or five years ago now, and being given the tour and guys there at guys real quick ben and john what you see when you get off the elevator so it's going up to like the fifth or sixth floor for the madden floor and each floor is a different game or a different part of madden being uh, worked on basically and i remember seeing this one part of the wall that basically was like the main vein of madden and so it basically tells you how many people are online what, who's in games and who's are not in games and what teams are being chosen. It's like a, a running ticker tape. It's like, I'm sitting there like, I was like, this what I think it is? He's like, yeah. I'm like, that, that's dope. That's dope. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, man, this is so cool. So this to be, you know, part of that, you know, for me, it's like, Sometimes I wish I had your job. I, I'm gonna be straight up. I, I, I wish I had your job. <laughs> just to know, just to know those those little tidbits. Um, what 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 what, what y'all get to do there uh, at the at the office down in uh, Orlando? Yeah, it, it's a, it's a great job. It's a dream come true being able to contribute to to my favorite all time video game Madden. Um, I get that a lot. A lot of people would love to work on Madden, mm -hmm. uh, until, at least until they look at my Twitter feed. Then maybe they don't <laughs> work with that as much, but. Uh, it's still pretty cool. Right. Yeah, you get a lot of feedback, right, obviously, from uh, the opinions of the gamers out there in the world, which we know as, as, as being a gamer that you're very opinionated because you want a game to run a certain way. And it's just unfortunate. I tell, I tell my, uh, my players that I coach, I say, hey, I say you can't be mad at the lag. You can't be mad at the the you know the uh, the game or saying that your your player didn't do this at a certain time. I'm like, hey, everybody has the same problem sometimes in the game. I say you gotta roll with it. That's what I tell guys. You gotta roll with it. So don't have any excuses to losing, throwing an interception or making a, or creating a turnover for yourself. So I I, I try to I do my best to uh, uh, you know make sure the the gamers out there understand that look. You got to, it's your, it's your, it's your duty. You know, you're going to make a mistake, but it's don't try to blame it on the game. The game's the game. It's going to do whatever it's going to do against you. So I help out there with you, Clint, uh, help you out there. So, uh, with, uh, with you getting, uh, being a gamer yourself. So tell us what we, what we start with everybody is our, your origin story of gaming. So who, what, and when, and I say, how old were you when you got gaming? So who got you into gaming? Uh, what game was it? And then how old were you and when that time started? <clears throat> I think I've been a gamer as long as I can remember. I don't I don't remember the, the age specifically, but I do remember when I, we would travel to my grandparents' house when I was very young. They had an Atari in their basement for whatever reason. And that was the first thing my brother and I would do when we got to my grandparents' house was run downstairs and play the Atari. Right. Um, so that was probably my first exposure. The first game I really remember was on Nintendo obviously Duck Hunt and Mario. And uh, my favorite one was the, the track pad that you could lay on the floor on Nintendo and you could like run on the dots to do your sprints and your long jump. And everyone learned how to, if you jumped off the mat and then jump back on the mat, you get a really long, long jump. Uh, look, <laughs> I didn't know that glitch. <laughs> yeah. Love it. Nice, nice. Um, so looking in the Twitch chat here, we got questions. Like I said, we got Madden players in here. And, uh, and I think uh, he answered this uh, big B, says Clint. It says, when is Amon dropping an ultimate team? They're asking that question already. And so I you, think you're, that's, Amon, you're already in the game. You know this. We just, had, we just had a big college event in our ultimate team in our superstar uh, knockout mode, superstar KO as it's known as. You're right. And uh, you're, you're featured on the Nebraska Cornhuskers, so you're already in the game Sweet. Uh, now. Um, so I was super stoked to be able to review those screenshots and videos that we were putting out on our networks. 
uh, to have you in the game. And, and just as go back to when I played Madden as a youngster, and I know you're not that much older than me, but a little bit. Right, right. You, you were a frequent target of mine in my franchise leagues as a running back on my squad. So I do appreciate that. Hey, you are welcome. And I, I, for between this, between Madden Ultimate Team and then fantasy football, uh, for every, if I got a dollar for every time a championship I have helped win from back in the day, hey, I could buy another PC because it's broken right now. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which, which is interesting. I actually played Madden on PC for the first time here in the last couple, couple weeks because I was doing a stream. Uh, and they wanted us to have it on PC instead of console. I'm like, man, I got it on console. They was like, well, you got to uh, download a PC. I'm like, oh, never did this before. And it was it was, a, it was actually a cool, smooth gameplay. Um, I had never even thought about playing Madden on PC, but it was obviously still controller-based, um, and I could use that. So I, cause I was always worried, like, do I have to use mouse and keyboard? Or what would that be like just to try it out, trying to throw the ball? Uh, really hard. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> anyone anyone out there playing on PC, I highly recommend using a gamepad. Uh, mm. We do support mouse and keyboard, keyboard, but being a non-traditional kind of PC game, it's really hard to play on the keyboard. And God bless the folks that, that do it and probably do it really well. Right, right, right. So, uh, so with that being said, so describe exactly uh, what do you do at EA Matt and for the audience here listening today. <clears throat> sure. Um, so my role with the team is I'm the, the gameplay producer. Um, what that means is I am ultimately the one responsible for gameplay quality. And when I say gameplay, anything that happens between the white lines while you're playing football. We do, we do the, the fundamentals of football, the animations, tackling, blocking, passing, catching, playbooks. Uh, anything on the field is what, what my team is uh, in charge of making and creating. Mm -hmm. um, and so basically, I'm the person that needs to clear obstacles for my team, unblock them when they're blocked, and make sure that we're hitting all of our, our product goals uh, for the year, um, if that makes sense. Certainly follow that up with any questions that you have. Right, right. No, that, make, that makes sense because uh, I know one thing for this one, for Madden 22, I did notice the uh, – the little subtle change in the graphics because because I know year over years it's really hard to basically <clears throat> make a big change to a game that not much is changing year over year other than the players obviously <clears throat> excuse me new players getting drafted in or players getting um, free agent to other teams other than that but I did notice a nice subtle change to the graphics and some of the tackle animations um, to eat to defenders as well and then obviously offensive line defensive line interaction and mechanics you know when you have you know, a D lineman having to do a swim or a, a, a push move or under move, up and under move, you know, seeing those, how those are, are being animated. I just see a, a nice little change and just seeing more like, oh man, that looks pretty dead on of what I was seeing in real life watching the game on uh, on Sunday. What you got, John? All right. So my question then for you, uh, Clint, is so year after year, Amon's talking about these, these animations. H how do you determine what needs to be tweaked in the game? from a year-to-year -year basis? Well, ultimately, we, we want to improve and upgrade as much as we can. It's kind of the, the both the curse and the blessing of a yearly sports title. You only have so much time, and so you got to figure out what your highest value targets are, and some of those things may be driven just purely from player feedback. If players tell us they want a certain thing more than another thing, that's going to be a focus area. Right. We have a lot of data tracking in our game that will tell us these animations happen to play a lot more than these other animations. That oh, is another data point. Um, but ultimately, what it comes down to is every year we have a creative vision that we're trying to hit. And so all the pieces that we need to put together to hit that creative vision, like Amon said this year, we, we spent a lot of time on tackling. Tackling was really important to us. So we, uh, we refreshed a lot of animations and added new momentum, momentum logic and physics logic to our tackling system. Um, so we're touching, you know, year to year, we're trying to touch everything that we possibly can. Unfortunately, in the very short cycle that we have, it's nearly impossible to make, to make sure to get it, get to everything. And you talk about that um, uh, short cycle there, Clint. What does that look like? Um, this right now, obviously, the current version just came out. But how long does it take for you guys to put together that current version? When do you start working on next year's version? All of that stuff. So there's a lot of, uh, I'm going to call it crossover from year to year. Ultimately, our dev cycle on average is between 10 and 11 months. 
Mm. Uh, which, if you look at some of these more epic games, like let's take GTA Five or Red Dead Redemption, those take five to seven years uh, to, to put out wow. for good reason. Um, and, right. and we get months to do ours. And so at any given time, a producer or the design team could potentially be working on three different versions of Madden at the same time. And that's even if you take all the different platforms out of it. So uh, let's take, uh, when we started the process for Madden 22, which first launched, we were probably still supporting Madden 20 and 21 that were already out in the, in the world. We were mm -hmm. doing live support on those. And uh, before we even finaled Madden 21, we were probably in pre-production for Madden 22, getting together what that vision would be so that when the game launched, we were ready to start pulling resources off of Madden 21 and start putting them on Madden 22. Um, so there's there's a lot of crossover, but ultimately it's it's that you know, 10, 11 month window. That's crazy. It's just so little time really when you think about it in comparison to other games. Now you mentioned that game day momentum. I saw dynamic game day. Uh, the game day atmosphere, the game day momentum, and next gen stats driven AI. That's all within the game. Can you explain that a little bit to our to our listeners and viewers? Yeah, sure. So that was one of our big, really game wide innovations. It was a system we built with the intent of impacting all the different ways you play, whether you play online head to head, franchise, ultimate team. It works in a little bit different ways there. The one that's the most visible is the game day momentum. And that's, mm -hmm. uh, if, you, if you play on uh, Gen 5 right now, you see the new meter added yep. to the top of the score hub during gameplay. <clears throat> what we're trying to do with that is simulate what it feels like to play in, in environments that's not your home field or understanding how, and Oman, I think you could attest to this. I, I at least hope you do. Yeah. Momentum yeah. is a real thing when you're on the field. You can feel it. It is. That impacts players whether you're home or away. So there's two aspects to this thing. Home field advantage was something that our players really liked all the way back from our college football game way back in the year. We modernized that. So every NFL team has a home field advantage unique to their history and their backstory. And we have these M factors, which both teams can unlock via in-game execution. Right. And they will, they will provide different boosts and penalties to either team based on who holds the momentum. And, and the reason why we went in deep into that feature and that's before even talking about atmosphere and AI. Right. Was we do a number of studies every year to tell us what players want most out of Madden. And the thing that popped up the most over the last several years was they wanted to feel an emotional connection to their favorite team, mm. favorite players, and favorite fan base. And so that's what that's what really led to the creation of that feature. Yeah, I've, I've experienced that so far in the last three weeks of playing Madden where um, I, th I know last night I played a game, basically took it to overtime, but my offense, I noticed that where I, I gained the momentum and that meter was all the way, I was the Ravens and I was lit up all the way on my side to then plays where some plays were working out a lot better for me. And I think the one play that actually helped me win was, I, it was overtime, we were tied 17-17 and I threw a deep post right up the middle and with having the momentum, my, uh, I, I believe it was DeVernay, uh, caught the game winning touchdown. And, and I remember in another instance like a week ago where I was I had the momentum going against me and my, my screen was moving around weird. It was like rocking around where I couldn't really, you know, sit in the pocket. And if I had to sit and throw, I had to make sure my seat was my feet were set and they weren't I weren't scrambling and if I was scrambling it was an incomplete pass. So I like that little addition to make it a little bit more, you know, tougher, like a real atmosphere type because I know for college football, for sure, momentum is, is very huge on player emotions. And at the NFL level, it's just if you gained it like we were just talking about the Monday Night Football, the Ravens and the uh, Las Vegas uh, Raiders, that game was that was all about momentum on how that game was won and lost yeah. um, on that it, night. That's a great example. Like I, I could feel it watching the game. For most of the game, it felt like the Ravens were controlling the momentum. Mm -hmm. And then late, you started to feel a swing. And I think even before it got to overtime, I had it in my head, like, the Raiders are going to win this game. You can tell the Raiders are going to win this game, and they ultimately did win the game. Yeah. That's the that's the type of thing that we're trying to visualize with our dynamic game day system. Right, right. That's cool. That's cool. So uh, being at Madden, being at EA, what is your favorite part of your job of what you do there at EA? Uh, there's, there's a ton. Um, I think there's two things I, I'd call out here. Number one is I still have the ability to be very much ingrained into football. I love the sport of football. No matter what career I'd find myself in, I want it to be in football. So this is phenomenal for me. 
still involved in the sport very much. But more, more importantly, you know, pre-COVID at least, every year we got the opportunity to go out and visit Coach Madden. Twice a year we'd go review the creative with him. We'd sit and watch football with him and just kind of jam over whatever it is we wanted to talk about as a group with him for a full day of NFL football. And there's, there's not very many experiences, if any, that I've had in my life as special as those moments with Coach Madden. The guy is super knowledgeable about the sport. He still, you know, he, he, loves, he loves the sport more than anything else in the world, I think, mm. outside of his family. Um, he cares deeply about the future of the sport, and he's still very much involved and interested in what we're doing in the game that has his name on the cover. Right, right. So how was that first time meeting up with him? And So you say you met up at his house and kind of went over the game planning of it. How was that first uh, experience? Well, that's a great question. I have a, a great story for you. So we meet at his studio. He's got a big studio out there in or Oakland where okay. he used to do his podcasts. And he also has a company there that shoots commercials. But nonetheless, um, the Madden team took me out there when I was still an intern. I started as an intern in 2012 as a design intern. Okay. And they took me on the trip. Usually only about 12 people go on this trip. And they took me out there. And I was designing a feature at the time known as ID the Mic, which under the hood was new AI for pass blocking. Mm. And that's the name that we gave it, ID the Mic. And so we pitched this, this to Coach Madden, and I had never met him before. And he, he stops the meeting. He goes, OK, I, I hear a lot of people, and you guys throw this term around all the time, ID the Mic. Can anyone in this room actually tell me what it really means? Mm. And you know, I had just come off playing offensive line, so I knew what it meant. And so I explained to him what it meant. And, uh, and I passed the test, obviously. Right. And ever since, ever <laughs> since then, uh, not only have I had a great relationship with Coach Madden, because he was, he was finding out if I knew what I was talking about. Correct. And he found out that I did. So we've had a great relationship ever since. And also on the EA side, they've made sure that I go to every single one of those trips uh, from there on out to make sure if questions like that arise, they got somebody that can properly answer them. Right, you got a player on house when that, that is when those type of questions pop up. Hey, it's good to have a person like yourself in the room, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Josh, that was that's a, that was one of my greatest memories actually. That first conversation with Coach. Oh man, I can't imagine. That is, was he still full of smunk and energy like he does like in the old Madden oh, yeah. commercials, <laughs> where he's just yeah, saying he, he's got a lot of energy. Uh, very, you know, even more so than he'd come to expect in, in with us. He's even got a very very small, no filter. Like, he's just going to tell you exactly how he feels at the moment, and I love that about him. Gotcha. Is it kind of hard, though, because obviously John is at a certain age for you guys to be using terms that you would use while you're creating the game and trying to relate those to his experiences of real-world football? Is that kind of tough communicating sometimes? Uh, it's not really because he is so in tune with everything going on in the NFL. And what, what I find both entertaining and interesting at the same time is – We'll be talking about a lot of the concepts that we view as new to football, like uh, the year RG3 and Kaepernick were running read option. We were like, oh, this new concept coming to the NFL from college, we're going to feature it in Madden. And he says something like, none of this stuff is new. We, we've been doing this stuff since 1950. They're just recycling this stuff. We, we knew this stuff way back in the day. Um, and he's right. He, like he could show, you know, tell you proof about this stuff. So that. He has, he has no issues at all uh, communicating about modern or former NFL history. Oh, man, that's awesome. That's awesome. John, did you have a question? Yeah, okay. So one of the big things, obviously, every year with Madden, especially for the NFL players, are those ratings that they get. Um, how are those ratings determined? I get this question a lot. As one of our ratings adjusters, we have a team of ratings adjusters, as I'm sure you've all seen. Yep out in the uh, football sphere uh we are you know the best way to put it is just like scouts on an nfl team we're looking at scouting reports we're watching film uh we're evaluating players heck we, we even have myself included contacts around the league who will reach out to just to ask questions about things that we're seeing uh, most importantly though is those ratings drive the action on the field and so while we want to be extremely accurate to pay off NFL players as appropriately as possible, we also need the gameplay mm -hmm. to do the same. So the ratings have to match what we expect out of gameplay. An example of this is somebody I just happened the other day. Why is DeAndre Swift, the running back for the Lions, why is his catch rating so low? And uh, they said it's at a, a 68 or a 69. And I said, well, actually, it's not low because 
the 80s and 90s is reserved for receivers because those are the guys who get paid to catch the ball. Mm -hmm. The running backs are in a different tier. So the number one running back catching the ball, likely Christian McCaffrey, he's probably in the 80s because he's so good at it. But all the other running backs in the league are likely in the high 60s, low 70s because they're not receivers. Mm -hmm. So that that's what I mean by gameplay. When you just look at a certain guy in a vacuum and say, gosh, gosh that seems awfully low. If you look at it relative to his position group and what it does in, in gameplay, that's the most important piece. Gotcha. All right. So, yeah, to all the, uh, the Madden players here in the Twitch chat, there you go. So if you wonder why X receiver or X running back is not the, the rate, has the rating of catching the ball or speed rating or anything of that matter, there you go. There's your answer. Uh, real quick from the Twitch chat, two quick questions here. One is from both are from the same person. He's a Madden player, JF Cake. Um, a guy I met, a kid I met down in Florida uh, at Super Bowl, uh, Kansas City and 49ers uh, a couple years ago. And his first question is, does EA still have an inter uh, internship program? And uh, Clint, have you ever put yourself in Madden Ultimate Team? <laughs> uh, yeah, so I, I can talk to both of those to some level. So the internship program, um, EA does have internship programs usually for uh, folks who are about to graduate school or have just graduated school. You can get information on those at our jobs website, I believe. And don't quote me on this, but a simple Google search, you can probably find this. It's careers.ea.com. I believe is our jobs website. You should be able to get information about internships and other job openings at that website. Uh, secondly, myself and Ultimate Team. So uh, while I was playing, Ultimate Team wasn't, a, wasn't a, as big a thing as it is these days. So I was, was not in Ultimate Team. I was out of the game. Uh, before that really took off. I'm actually not allowed to be an ultimate team, and I've tried. Uh, because I'm a former NFL player and also an EA employee, there's a conflict of interest because Obviously. Um, any, any legends in ultimate team do get compensated for use of their likeness. But being that I'm also an EA employee, I'm not allowed to be compensated for my likeness. So there's a conflict of interest there, and I don't want to cross any lines. So Right. Um, I'm I'm good just being on the development side. Uh, I think that's a good position. Uh, you know, yep. it, it's working out. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, so, I say the question of the moment: How do you guys determine? I think it's, I think I, I I do know part of the answer here. Uh, determine the cover athlete for every Madden year over year, and I know one is sometimes you'll get the votes from the fans. Um, I know that's one aspect. What's uh, any other aspects maybe that you can tell us here that you can we, tell we us? Used, we used to do the voting. Um, that, that went away mostly just because of attrition. I think, it, I think it got played out over so many years that it just became not as relevant as it was at one time. So we went back to just selecting the athletes ourselves. In most cases, we're looking for that, that yearly football icon. Mm -hmm. um, however, this last year with Mahomes and Brady, like it was just such a no brainer coming off the seasons that they had in the Super Bowl. There really wasn't any other obvious choices besides them. They're such great players. They're great ambassadors. I mean, right. Brady's the GOAT. You know, he's, yeah. the, he's the greatest maybe athlete in any sport. Um, just won a Super Bowl. How old is he? 42? 44. 44. 44. Yeah. Um, <laughs> on his second team, he seems unstoppable in his seventh ring. And Mahomes looks like a guy who could turn in into that eventually and just having to match up in that Super Bowl was, was really a no-brainer so it was easy this year yeah. you guys ever like look back and you're like man we really regret putting that guy in the cover because maybe he didn't turn out to be you know superstar or is it always <coughs> just look uh I don't think so the the covers are very much a snapshot in time of where we are in the NFL at that time and so even the the select few that maybe didn't work out i think were appropriate um and all have been all of our cover athletes have been great ambassadors for us i think the one that sticks out that that a lot of people will point to is when peyton hillis actually won the fan vote was on the cover as the Browns running back um, but even that it, it, we're playing up we used peyton hillis in some promotional stuff this year with the goats and stuff uh, actually former teammate of mine peyton hillis but uh, overall i think i think all very appropriate all right and it's have you on i think we have to ask this uh, i don't think it's as prevalent as it once was but that madden curse madden jinx 
I mean, I'm sure you heard about it too, playing in the NFL. Did do you have any experiences coming across athletes where that were a little hesitant to be on the cover of the game? No, I I think any any athlete with the opportunity to be on the cover of a video game is going to jump up jump on that. And Amon, feel free to back me up here if you support. In the game of football, by the end of the season, 75% of the players are going to be hurt in some form or yes. fashion. So it's pretty likely that if you're on the cover of a football game, you're going to experience some sort of injury yes. that season. And if you don't, it's pretty rare. Well, to back you up on that, sort of, I was too much a superstitious little kid at the time. I was asked to be on the cover of Madden. Even though it was my favorite game, I was so scared of the superstition at that time. I well, denied we found it. One. I, we exactly. Found we found one here. But it, it was, I was young. I was like 24, just getting my career started. And I'm like, wait a minute. I don't know if I want to do this. This might be – I overthunk it. That's basically what I did. I overthunk it. I was like, wow. Like, what? Amon, what was you thinking? I was a little kid. I was 23, 24 years old. So I apologize. <laughs> I, I, will, I will say this about the jinx. I think you're. I will admit dead that on. though. I will admit that my mistake. <laughs> I think you're dead on, Clint. Is because every the way I always looked at the jinx thing was, it's the NFL. Guess what? You're gonna get hurt, and so then you can always construct your narrative that that guy got hurt and this guy got hurt. Why? Because you're running into each other at full speed. Like, yeah, people are gonna get hurt. Yeah, and there, there's plenty of guys that buck that trend. Brady has been on the cover twice. I think he's doing okay. Yeah. Uh, Gronkowski's been on the cover. Um, Calvin Johnson broke the receiving record the year he was on the cover. So, yeah. you know. Yeah. <laughs> Just thought about it too much. Um, I know something that a lot of players in the world of NCAA are thinking about way too much is if, when and if NCAA college football is coming back. So EA, EA already announced that college football is coming back. I don't believe that we have a set date yet. Gotcha. Uh, still in the very early stages of getting that set up, but it, but it is it is official. College football is on the way back. Gotcha. So it is. You heard it here first, everyone. NCAA college football is coming back. I want to quickly ask, too, does that change anything with the new rules that you have in uh, college football with athletes being paid and stuff like that? Does that affect anything? Hmm, your good guys question. Event? Uh, I'm I'm sure that that will have an impact to what level I don't know yet. I think all of that stuff is still very much ongoing, and and yet to be figured out. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, I mean, I can just imagine how hard it would be to make a game like that because there's how many Collins athletes out there now. So it's I don't know. My hats off to you guys for putting that together. That's 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 not easy. I'm sure. Right. Yep, for sure. So JFK, that qu I say that year for me was around the '03. 04 seasons when we had a you know here in the Green Bay we had a pretty be a decent year running the ball so that's when that year happened uh, and I declined and I was just so disappointed in myself a year later I was like no I should have did it uh, but uh, I know Clint we got to wrap you up we got to get you rolling so what is I say what's coming down the line in the next six months to a year for yourself and EA Madden you can let people know before you uh, jump off here uh, being that we we just launched Madden 22, we're now in the in the time period where we're going to be doing live support, and that that stretches all, across all kinds of things. It's new content and Ultimate Team, uh, you know, new we call them uh, Madden seasons, or basically, lack of a better term, themes. We always do you know big events over Halloween, big events over the holidays. Yeah. Um, you know, new new live events for our modes: Superstar KO, Yard. Um, and then gameplay updates to keep the game fresh and fun, you know, all across the year. So that's what's really upcoming for us. And and then obviously in your wheelhouse, I'm on, we still have Madden Championship Series going on with major major championships all throughout the out the NFL season. Yeah, y'all just had one what a weekend ago, I believe. Yeah. Yep. Nice, nice. Yeah, I keep track of that. Obviously, playing and coaching Madden, I gotta you know be abreast of you know watching those Madden MCS. A game being played and obviously what the new meta is of playbook offensively or defensively and some stuff that me and my players got to go over and uh try to figure out how to use and be effective and uh you know if it's a bunch formation or if it's a you know trips a tray formation something that is now the new formation that i say players are exploiting and being very successful in uh in these madden leagues that we play at the college level but also at the mcs level so um so, Clint, man, I want to say thank you for jumping on 
And this has been awesome. We could, I said, you, you always got an invite to come back on whenever you got something you want to talk about. Let me send me a text. Say, Amani, hey, can I come on? You're definitely welcome on. I'm pretty sure the Twitch chat would definitely enjoy it. Ben and John as well. Um, we know you got bigger and better things to do. You got a call coming up. So uh, uh, thank you again for being on the show today. And I uh, hope the meeting goes well. And I hope all the updates and all the big, I say, additions for the rest of Madden for this whole 2021 and 2022 year goes uh, go smooth for you. Because I know how uh, you know the de development can be. It can be a, a rough go at it sometimes. But I hope everything is smooth from here on out for you. Yeah, I, I appreciate it very much. All you guys, thank you, and uh, hope to see you all again. All right, Clint. He's Clint. Adios, Here. man. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. All right. Yeah, that was that was awesomeness. We got to take a little break there. Um, here in the Twitch chat is, I mean, it was actually a lot more questions, um, but a lot of fun stuff. I know one of the guys, I think it was Big B asking if, if when I asked the question to Clint about him getting in the game, um, they was asking, Big B asked, could I get uh, a facial scan? And that was something they actually did. They, they did it at a Madden Bowl, uh, Super Bowl 50. If you remember Super Bowl 50 with the Denver Broncos and Carolina Panthers um, in San Francisco. And they actually did a face, they had a face scan machine. And Clint was there, his whole development team was there. And so I was able to get my face scan <clears throat> for that one. Um, but it's, it's something more of a, it's an in-house thing, so that means when a player, uh, either like myself or a current, a current player, they either get flown in or they go down to Orlando studio to get the actual face recognition scan. So actually, the face you see is the face that uh, is uh, it's actually on that, obviously, current player. Um, big B, so there you go. Um, and you know, uh, NCAA is coming out, just no set date. We did, did, and I remember we did talk about that, I think, on game releases a while back. But uh, that is something that obviously that's always prevalent because I know, is it John? You're a fan of it, right? And Ben, both big fans of NCAA. Yep. So <clears throat> that's something that has to be, it's always, I, so I know their areas are burning down in uh, Florida. Because <laughs> that's where the, I say that's the studio where he works at, uh, is down in Florida there. Um, so here, getting on the quick hidden news bites, uh, here on Gamers Biz. Uh, game industry biz, excuse me. Um, Twitch is a little bit. Uh, they have a, a refund policy going on for uh, t for Twitch subscribers. So, so it says changes. It says Twitch changes refund policy to avoid chargeback. So the new policy will prevent users from repeatedly asking for subscription refunds. Because uh, I don't know if Ben and John, you really understand how the sub program works for Twitch. So. Just like you sub to Netflix, right? It's fourteen ninety five a month. It's the same thing for when you sub to IE my channel. That there's different tier levels. So it's a five ninety five, uh, a nine ninety five, then a fourteen, and then a Prime Video. With the Prime Video is the highest, which is like twenty four ninety five a month. So people, I guess, are asking <clears throat> for refunds once the subscription goes through for the month. So Twitch has implemented a change in its refund policy to per, to protect the content creator. So obviously somebody subscribes and then be like, boom, I want my money back, you know, within the few 24 hours of the, the payment going through here. Uh, so the content creators are getting that charge, uh, that, I say protect from the charge back. So the new rules of the particular target people, <clears throat> excuse me here, who asks for the subscription refund as soon as as they get a shout out to uh, from the from the streamer? You know, when when you know when somebody goes into a stream, they hey hey thanks for joining my stream, thanks for the you know shout out to so and so for the follow or for the sub, and then people basically are kind of retracting that sub as soon as they hear their name get said across the screen. So I'm like, come on guys, come on people. Wait, so, wait, so they just <laughs> want to do this because they just want to hear their name on Twitch? Yes, a lot of people that basically come into a channel, you know, if it's not your people, like your moderators and your normal followers, somebody that jumps in and jumps out just to get their name said, this is how the, you know, this this uh, article is being read right, read right now. Yeah. All right, I'm sorry, I'm going to ask dumb questions. How does that benefit them? It doesn't. 
I mean, it benefits the content creator because obviously they're getting paid, but then that content, then that person who subbed is now asking for that money back instantly. Yeah, so but the person who asked for the shout out and then they like, hey, give me my refund back, which by the way, now they're, they're changing. Like you said, they have, if you have a repeated history of that, they're not going to let you do that so much. But it's the person who asked for the refund. Is it just the thrill of hearing your name? I think so. I think that's what it is. You know, I think, you know, I've heard that over the years. Uh, between being a content creator myself and some of my moderators like Big B, JFK, kind of saying, "Hey, I'm on. You know, this person just trolling you. They just want this information, and then they'll, they'll, that you won't, you may not. They only come in for giveaways. Like I, I, I kept notice of those when I was doing giveaways that certain people only showed up for giveaways. They didn't show up when I was just doing the podcast or doing my Madden day stuff like that. They just wanted, okay, when you're giving away free stuff, that's when I'm gonna show up. And I'm like, oh." oh, oh used to that in the radio world right exactly <laughs> exactly so uh to continue on says users will still have 24th the uh, the 24-hour to request a refund but twitch has implemented a new process looking at users history of refunds before agreeing to it so obviously they're gonna do your their homework it's like hey we've been seeing you you pay and then you ask for a refund back and if you got a history of that, nah, 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 they're going to get the Matumbo finger. They're going to get that. No, 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 no. So when reviewing refund requests, we primarily look at, so this is Twitch talking, we primarily look at historical refund requests from purchasers, accounts, and actions taken with respect to those requests, the new rule reads. So those abusing the refund policy could be banned for using the platform altogether. So submitting excessive refund requests or attempting to abuse our refund processes is against twitch policy and can result in limited access to product to product service and or suspension or termination of your account that is what twitch said so for you lurkers out there watch out um, so the platform has recently been controversial in a way for way it has handled the wave of hate. They also been a wave of unfortunate hate wave hate raids um, against marginalized uh, creators. Last week, uh, Twitch filed a lawsuit against the users allegedly behind the hate raid. So I can't even just imagining what that is. So obviously, we know what hate is, obviously. And then a raid. So a raid. In a Twitch chat, is so when I'm wrapping up this podcast, for example, one of my moderators say, I'm on, um, there's a streamer that's brand new that they need a few followers. So let's raid them. Obviously, we're so, so it's another way of supporting another content creator that's new to the scene. So if I have, you know, I have my five, five or six viewers here right now, and those five or six viewers, well, I will type in that content creator's channel and then send them to that channel so now they have an extra so it's basically another five or six people joining their stream so it's basically to continue the support you know content creators help content creators here and so a hate raid obviously is somebody that's basically sending in their their uh, moderators or followers and going there and spewing um, evilness basically being bad um, and not supporting them and basically ridiculing or being haters uh, to that content creator so people have found ways to make a good thing bad in in in, <laughs> in one in one shape or the form of why Twitch obviously is a community supported by itself, but then also people flip it around and mess it up for everybody. You know, like, come on, man! Like, why do you want to? Why do you want to do this, man? It's already it's already tough being a content creator, as you both know. We've been streaming, and we know it's hard work. Um, so for why are you making it even harder? by doing something like this to people out there that these young kids are trying to get into the business, trying to make this their career and their life. And there's always somebody out there trying to make it harder than what it should be already. So um, come on guys, we gotta be better than this Twitch. We gotta do better than this out there. So Ben, John, what uh, what are your, top, your topics of the week? All right, I got the first, John. I think mine's pretty entertaining. So a couple weeks ago, I talked about a gaming tournament called Riptide that was going on in Sandusky, Ohio. Well, the gamer, let's see, what is his name again? It is, 
with something with cake, cake assault. So the gamer cake assault, right? He wins the 245 person rivals of Aether event, I believe it's called. Well, he starts to celebrate and he's fist pumping with both hands up in the air and he's doing this violently. He's jumping up and down and all of a sudden he starts grabbing his shoulder and he goes to the ground. He like dislocated his shoulder, popped it out of the socket. He's on the ground, just writhing in pain. Then eventually, after a few seconds, he gets back up and starts fist pumping with the one good arm he's got left. The video is awesome. I can post that up on our Twitter account, AG underscore gamers lounge. But I thought that was pretty funny. Post it up, please. I watched that before we went live today. Oh, man, you because uh, I think it was John put it in. Or no, you put it in there. And oh, my God. I, I, I don't think I've ever celebrate it that hard now i remember during my playing days either after a big tackle or a big touchdown that you high five you know high five bread or donald or somebody i don't think i ever broke nobody's hand or dislocated my own shoulder celebrating now what i did do i told you this um i was coaching high school football and i was at southwest green bay high school and we were playing our rival notre dame high school and it was a hail mary play and we won on a hail mary our receiver basically fell on his butt and the ball landed. It was two DBs. The ball went between both DBs' hands and landed in our wide receivers. And he's sitting on the on the goal or in the, in the end zone on his butt. Ball falls right in. So I jump like, yeah. One of my own players' foot literally landed. He stopped right, right when I jumped and I came down and felt like I broke my ankle. Now, that's the only thing I've, I've, I've almost felt broke or sprained out of celebration. But being a... But being a football player, I just shook it off. <laughs> yeah, so I took football to him on, much like you did after your playing days. And it was my first year being the offensive coordinator. And I called the play that ended up going for like an 80-yard touchdown. I think it was like a 25 power or some right. off tackle. Right. So this kid gets to the outside and he's running. I'm so excited. I'm running down the sidelines with him, right? Well, I forgot that at the field we play at, there's like this little cover of a drain so that people with bleach don't trip. Uh I tripped over this pad and I go face first into the turf and I'm looking up from the ground, kind of lightheaded and I see he scores and I get right back up again and I'm celebrating, but I totally forgot about that. Oh man. (laughs) So yeah. There's got to be video of that (laughs) somewhere. Is there not video? I know John would love to see that that video. Just put that on Twitter. <laughs> John would love to have that video right now. Yes. Oh my God. But anytime, I, anytime someone fails on anything, I just post the gif of Ben tripping. <laughs> oh, but yeah, to, to see that video of my man at this, uh, I think it probably was an FGC. Was it a fighting game? Sounds like. And he's celebrating. To yeah. You know you have to be punching, air punching hard as M unbelievable to throw your shoulder out of socket Uh huh. and how painful that is i know for one i know hands-on how painful that is i had an s1 uh, they call it an s1 separation in my ac joint uh when i was at nebraska against we played the huskies and the strong safety came down and put his helmet like right here so i know exactly how that feels it don't feel good and to do it to yourself like somebody hitting you or you hitting the ground okay you're like okay yeah the ground did it or that player did it but when you do it to yourself that's like extra like what was i thinking yeah <laughs> you're like it's a pretty hilarious video that guy is celebrating hard i don't even honestly i don't even want to like try to do it because i'm afraid no. i'm gonna pop my shoulder out he like, is try to attempt. oh man it just shows you i say the intensity he was the intensity level he was at when he won that match okay yeah. He was on, he was out of the arena hype, hype <laughs> to throw his shot out of the socket. Man, yeah. that is amazing. That is off the chain right there. Uh, what you got, John? Okay, um, <clears throat> I got this from Axios. I found this uh, on the web. Video game scale or sales rather skyrocket to record highs for August. It hit a record, US video game sales, 4.4 billion dollars in video game sales like i said that was a record now here's what's surprising the nintendo switch outshines microsoft and sony um the console was the best-selling hardware in august 
and for the year to date, which I don't know about you, that kind of surprised me that the Switch um, is the, the highest as far as those hardware sales. And the PlayStation 5 actually leads in dollar sales. Um, and what else did we find from this? Oh, the best-selling August video game was, any guesses? Madden. Madden. Madden NFL 22. So there you go. For eight days in August? It oh, came yeah, out like when, when it was released. Yeah, it was August twentieth. Oh, twentieth. Okay. Yeah, so, but 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 yeah. but I know for like the Madden pros that are out there, they had it like a whole week before. Because I remember watching like uh, Eric Problem Wright, who is a Madden pro, playing it like on the fifteenth or the fourteenth or something. A few other Madden players that I know, uh, some Madden content creators, obviously, they know EA and they were playing it like on August. 10th stuff like that so but some I, of it. I, I, I do wonder what this says because a lot of people are thinking you know pandemic everybody's record sales in video games now everybody seems to be you know, vaccinated if you are and going outside and doing other things but still that 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 still is at a record number even past where we are in, in the world of covid right now which i thought was really amazing i don't know if that says like Maybe it's somebody like me who got back into video games and it's like, hey, this is awesome. I'm going to play every Friday and Saturday night or whatever that case may be. Um, and I'm wondering if maybe like that is part of the reason why it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Right, right. Uh, quick to uh, Twitch chat here. Big B says, Ben, there's got to be a show on American Family Video talking about when you, that you felt when you fell down over the vent. <laughs> America's funny as only. You know what? If I tried hard enough, that happened probably like eight or nine years ago. I'm sure some parent out there still has the video because it was their kid scoring the long touchdown. But I don't want to find out if that exists or not. So. Oh, I want it so bad. Right, and then also with that early access, JF Cake says uh, he played it early with the EA Access, and that's when you have the EA Access uh, Xbox account. Actually, I'm not sure if it's on PlayStation 2, but for sure on Xbox. So, yeah, you have early access before the 20th if you have the EA, uh, the extra EA account play across platforms there. So, all right, Ben, take us to this or that. This or that. All right, it's a big difference this week now. I didn't get a chance to get to the list. So this is not from my mind. This is from Ben's mind. Oh boy. Of this or that. Wait, ben, okay, here we go. Um, would you rather have been born with one arm or one leg? I don't mean to laugh. Uh, yeah, I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I, I'll start with this one. I'll, I'll take one arm because with, I'd rather have both my legs because you can still do a lot of stuff. Swim. You have to swim with one arm and two legs. So I've seen it. I could be a Paralympic swimmer. There you go. You game? They have the adapted controller. Really? For yeah. The, for... Yeah, they have it. Yep. So I wouldn't mind being one arm. I could still play video games and swim and ride a bike. I don't know how to answer this question at all. Um, I don't and just... That's why I wanted to put it on here because I'm like, this is really difficult. <laughs> If you think too hard about it, yes, it is. But don't it's just just think of for what it, what you see it on the paper, Ben or John. Just okay, I'll the... go with one arm. <clears throat> I have both of my legs, um, so you're still able to do things. But here's the here's the thing that we don't think about is if you're born this way, I bet you you feel completely at ease and normal with whatever life is giving you, right? So like, yeah. when you think about how difficult something would be. I bet if you're born that way. Shoot, you had to get over that by the time you started walking or crawling or you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's probably second nature to you. So it's not even, it's not yeah. a problem. It's not a yeah. problem if it's from See, birth. So you man, adapt. I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna go the opposite of you two. I'm gonna go. I would rather have be born with one leg, and obviously not knowing, you know, what it would feel like to either have one arm or one leg. Right. In my mind, I would think it would be easier to have a prosthetic leg. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, well, you, like you say, when you're putting in a definition of from birth, I think either one works out because as a kid growing up, you just that's your ref, your frame of reference. Mm-hmm. You don't know nothing different. So somebody's being born with one leg or one arm to them by the time they're age 10 or 11. They're like, man, yeah, what, it's, uh, that's old news. You know, <laughs> I, w- I was born. I was born like this. So this is what I got to do, you know, to get by. 
Um, JFK says, nah, he said, I got to walk, obviously. There you go. Uh, that means he wants both his legs. <clears throat> um, and then uh, it says one, Big B says, one arm, they have special controllers. Yeah, they have, they have adaptive controllers. I know for Xbox. I don't know about PlayStation, um, but for sure, Xbox has an adaptive controller for people that either have like a no arm or no hand or, you know, fingers that have been damaged or deformed, things of that nature. Yeah. All right, guys, next, this or that. Would you rather date a Hollywood superstar or date an Olympic gold medalist? Mm. Oh. Um, I'm going to go, I, could, I would date an Olympic gold medalist. Yeah. I'm just saying I'm an athlete. I'm going to just go off of that because, you know, they're in shape. I'm in shape. We kind of have a lot of things in common. We both like to work out. Boom be very vain in my response to this it's got to be a hollywood superstar because how many hollywood superstars do you know that are ugly and typically a hollywood superstar has to be rich and after watching the olympics a month ago or so i saw some olympians that mm, i don't know they're a little scary looking just be what? honest <laughs> what the yeah. he double hockey stick <laughs> I was gonna be vain in my response. Hey, bro. They're, they're rich. Very, they're pretty. very oh. vain. Oh my God, Ben. Now, now, I don't know what to do with that one. I don't either. I'll go with Olympic gold medalist. Um, but you do bring up a good point as far as their. I mean, just because you're an Olympic gold medalist doesn't mean you're pulling in. Uh, well, you know, I don't a good salary or whatever. Um, but here's here's the reason why because I feel like they'd be more down to earth, right? The, the gold medalist? Gold medalist. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Then a Hollywood superstar who has everybody kissing their butt and just they everybody don't... wanting their attention. Like, you'd be just another piece of, like, hundreds of people trying to... You'd be the boyfriend picture. taking selfies. Yeah. Hey, can you take this picture, <laughs> you take for, this picture for me, Ben? Yeah. <laughs> that'd, that'd be you, medalist, you, may be, you may be able to go out and have a great time and no one may not even know who you are. And Boom. Boom. But yeah, you know like what? That. Your girl can dunk, or she could run faster than you, or flip yeah. a lot more flips than. Hey, I'll be like, you know what? I'm not even mad at you, girl. Do that. She's do that tumble. Some, you could do that tumble all day. She's getting some endorsements. Yeah. Right. We got Nike. Yeah. We got Gatorade. Like, what's up? I'm good for life. I don't need no more Gatorade forever. <laughs> hey. Um. All right. Next, this or that. If I go, um, McAdams all day. Uh -huh. What did he say? What bitch did he say, Ben? <laughs> I said, if I can go home at night with Rachel McAdams every single day, sign me up for that. I'll take yeah. that over. Yes, I've never met her, but okay. That's a, that's a good one. I got to give you. Is she in the notebook? Yep. The yep. notebook. Uh, Doctor Strange. She was in Doctor mean, Strange. Yeah, Mean Girls. Mean Girls. Yep. Mean Girl. That's where Brittany put it. That was the movie that put her on the scene was Mean Girls. Mm -hmm. yep. She was the um, meanie. All right, next one. This or that. Would you rather sing in public or dance in public? Dance all day. <laughs> I'll be getting it. Ah. Yeah. Ah. Look at you. Ah. You can dance right now for those of you on the Twitch. There you show. go. I'll dance all day. Cannot rap. Cannot sing. Don't ask. I thought you said you could rap at one time. Didn't I could. No, no. Yeah, I can rap, but obviously I, I'm only good at mimicking the rapper's voice. I, I can't. I don't have my own rap tone voice. Yeah. So if I'm rapping Kendra Lamar, I sound like Kendrick Lamar. I rap LL Cool J, I sound like LL Cool J. But wow. dancing, that's a whole nother thing. I could do my whole thing dancing now. All right. I just got to get good at uh, TikTok. I just don't know how to use that yet. <laughs> I am horrible at both, absolutely horrible at both. So I would just rather dance, I think, in public because do you get enough adult beverages in you nobody cares what your dancing looks like. But I feel like people are gonna remember if you have a horrible voice. Yeah, for sure. Yep. And see, I don't need adult beverages to, to drop it like it's hot. I because can just make can. it happen. I can make it happen anywhere. Nay, nay, all that. What? I could be the backup dancers for the next Drake, Kendrick Lamar video. Make it happen. They just don't know me. Now they know. I make it go. I'm busting rhymes too. What? Ooh. <laughs> Oh, man. I think Ben makes a really good point about dancing. Like, you can have fun with yourself. Be like, I'm a bad dancer. Look at me. But if you try to make fun of yourself singing, you just sound like a bad singer. Exactly. You know I mean? Like I just sounded. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, 
like a mom just sounded. So I'm going to go dance in public. Um, would you rather, well, infamous or forgotten? I'd rather be forgotten. Right, yeah. because because if you're infamous, that means you did something not so good. Right, something right. bad. I'd, yeah. I'd rather be, that's an easy layup for me. That's an easy, yeah, I'm, I'm with John. That's a simple layup. That's a low-hanging fruit. Uh, I'd rather yeah. be forgotten than infamous. Yeah. I don't oh, want to okay. be be remembered for something that oh, I did some wrong to somebody or so or myself, whatever. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, this or that snitch on. Ooh. Would you rather snitch on a friend and lose him or her, or lie for a friend and keep them? Dang, that's a tough one. Now that's tough. <laughs> Cause I got fr- yeah. Cause I got my buddies. I got a group of friends that we still talk from high school. And we've all snitched on each other at one point in time. We all have. And we're still friends. <laughs> we have all told something on each other at one point in time in our friendship that we got into a fight over and then we made up buddy. We're still buddies. Like one of my buddies, like no no lie. Okay, I had a girlfriend. It was one of it was my girlfriend at the time. We were juniors in high school. My girlfriend at the time was one of my friends' cousin. And she basically asked me in a conversation that we had privately and we're juniors in high school and this it spooked me a little bit at that age it's like talking she started talking about marriage and i was like i'm 16 17 years old whoa whoa, sure okay (laughs) you know she's like well i'm gonna be a senior next year and this that and i'm like okay so my whole life just kind of flapped before my eyes and i'm like uh I don't think I'm ready for that. <laughs> I'm st- I don't. I barely. I just started driving. I'm like, man. So I, I I met with my friends. My buddies was like talking. I was like, hey guys, so and so asked me about you know getting married and da 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 da. And they were like, what? I'm like, like that's like it's not the worst thing, but yeah, it is a little way too little early, you know. But I was like, hey, let me have. I'm gonna have this conversation with her. Don't say nothing. But do what did one of my buddies do? They mention it to her before I can have the conversation with her. So she calls me up crying. I'm like, I already knew what happened. I said, dude, what did I tell you? This was between us. You was not supposed to share that information. Man, I don't know my bad. Man. Yeah, it's your bad. <laughs> it's your bad. Because you know you. It's, it's the worst when you hear from somebody else and the, not the horse's mouth. I was like, dude, I was going to let her know. I was like, I wanted to, just, I was just talking to y'all first so I could get it out and understand, you know, make sure I'm not saying nothing rude or disrespectful. And you just threw me under the bus. But we still friends today. We, we, I don't know, we, we, we worked it out. <laughs> so for me, there's a fine line in like lying for a friend to keep them. Like, I'm never going to lie about something that is like criminal. True. Obviously. Yeah, I would lie to keep a friend. I would tell a little white lie. I a would little. Do Snitch in my not grand head. larceny, though. Not grand, lar- grand larceny. Yeah, no. Yeah. You're not going to, yeah. Anything criminal? No. You're going to jail. I'll tell the truth in your ass. Well, I mean, you're <laughs> uh, But no, I would never snitch on a friend. Ever. Ever. I've never done it. Never done it before, and hopefully I never do do it in my life. So I would I'm rather. Glad you brought out, I'm glad you brought out the criteria because you're right. Because if like your friend is committing like some heinous acts or crimes or whatever. You're like, Hey man, don't tell me. I'd be like, what are you doing? Well, why would you, what, why? But if it's something less aggressive, sure. Yeah. All right. Hey, real quick to the Twitch chat, man. We got it for the quit chat. Twitch chat is firing off right now with today's this or that. So JF cake says gold medalist. You can't get a WNBA girl or a track or volleyball. And there's way more options. There you go. See, be you know, dated to an Olympic athlete. And then uh, Big B says, but if you were with a Hollywood star, you could walk the red carpet even if you weren't famous. Big B. Good point. Good point, Big B. Okay. And then another point he brings up. No, wait a minute. What he says. I think he says it here. I says, you'd always be thought of as the celebrity's partner. Okay. There you go. And then something about Rosie O'Donnell. I saw somebody say something. What was it? I think it was Big B. No, no, it was JF Cake says, and Rosie O'Donnell 
is a superstar. LOL. <laughs> there you go. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I'm just there you go. Be and Rosie. Yep. Um, all right. Next, this or that. Would you rather puke in an airplane or puke in front of your sports hero? So I can explain this one. I wanted to put this one in here because I know from hearing people say it, they have gotten nervous when they've met a mom, right? I was a little True. nervous the first time I met a mom. I don't even remember what I said. You were walking through the hallway in a building here, and I'm like, oh, my God, that's a mom green. The guy that <laughs> Like I was a little starstruck, you know, and sometimes you get, you know, not uh, butterflies, but I did get a little queasy a little bit at first. Mm -hmm. Not that I was going to puke or anything like that, but then imagine puking on a plane, right? You, there is no privacy in a plane unless you can make it to that bathroom. But then if you do make it to that bathroom, you're tight, you're cramped. If you're claustrophobic or anything, you may, you know, that puke may be violent. It may not be good. So mm -hmm. I thought this one is a tough one. Oh, man. Repeat it one more time, John. Puke in an airplane or puke in front of your sports hero? Uh, oh, I can go. Okay. I can go. I think go you next. have to puke in an airplane because they've got the puke bags. I've When I was a little kid, I puked on a plane before um, in, in, a, in a bag. But they've got the bags. And at least you have an excuse like of motion sickness. Like it makes sense. You're in a huge plane. You're moving right. through the sky. There's some motion sickness. But if you puke in front of your sports hero and there's nothing to puke in and you're just there, like, then you're just embarrassed. You're like, well, he's vomited all over the floor and there's a Mon Green over here, or whoever that person is. Like, you have no excuse. There's no motion sickness. There's nowhere to go with it. It's So I'd rather go in a plane where I can actually control it a little. Uh, big, <clears throat> Real quick, Big B says, and uh, he might be mistaken here. He said, well, if you puke, puke on, the air, on the plane, Oh no! Never mind. I read it wrong. Okay, he was—he's good. If you puke, puke on a plane, they can't open the window and air it out. That's a good point, because you're thirty-five thousand feet above sea level or whatever in the air. Um, me, uh, I'm not—I I don't have motion sickness, so put, puking on a plane will not happen for me. Um, potentially puking in front of my uh, celebrity that I'm excited to meet, potentially. Um, in one instance, uh, I think, I don't know if I told this story on air yet, but I'm gonna tell it now. Uh, the first time, first and, first and only time I met J-Lo was at a movie audition. I was at, after my rookie year in Seattle, so it was the off season, so I'm in LA just chilling. My agent sets up an audition for any given Sunday. You remember that terrible football movie? Um, <laughs> In my opinion, yeah, that's a terrible story. football movie. <laughs> and so P. Diddy is there. That's when P. Diddy and J-Lo were dating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Tay Diggs was there. T.O. Terrell Owens was there. Myself and a few other NFL players. Uh, some names I can't remember. And a lot of prominent actors at that name, they were, at that time, they weren't the big time actor yet. Like Tay Diggs, he was one, but it was a few other people that were there too, that if you, if I, if I, I can't remember their names, but I know their faces. And I remember walking to the cooler. So we're at a Hollywood audition, okay? This is where, now when I think about it, oh, this was a subpar operation because I don't even know it's outside, it's a football audition. You would think they have like a better setup to get drinks. They basically had a cooler out on the grass for J-Lo and other celebs to grip, grab their water out. Obviously, this is pre-9-11, pre pre-COVID, everything, you know. <laughs> so I go to the cooler to grab me some water, and then so happens, J-Lo is at the cooler. Now, mind you, obviously, I didn't get nauseous. I did get nervous. And so I'm talking. We started a conversation. Hey, how you doing? You know, where are you from? I'm from here. Where are you from? Whoa, whoa. And I went, I reached to the cooler to grab the top and she's reaching in at the same time. So I grabbed the top, I hold it for her. And as we're talking, she hands me my water bottle. I just so happen to reach with the hand that's holding the cooler top up with that hand. And I dropped the cooler on JLo's hand. Ooh. And I'm like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> so that was like me vomiting on her, you know, just totally <laughs> doing something dumb. I like, I just, I'm in my head, I'm like, I just broke J-Lo's arm. 
which I didn't. You know, I didn't break her arm. But in my head, I'm like, I totally broke her arm. I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. And she starts laughing, though. But she, this is the good, you know, good person she is. She's just, you're cool. You're okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. And I was like, okay, okay, okay. I'm so sorry. So I could say I I say I figuratively vomited on her by dropping the uh, cooler top on her arm. <laughs> Imagine how many times she gets something like that with somebody starstruck. Yeah. Right. Yeah, at that time. For sure. Understandable. Understandable. But yeah, I didn't. So I didn't know. I know vomiting is not coming up. I'm, uh, okay. It takes me. I watch uh, too many horror films and I watch too much ridiculousness to not throw up. Yeah. Okay. I could stomach it. But you will drop coolers uh, covers on JLo's hand. No problem. Hey. Um, all right. This or that. Last one for this week, guys. Would you rather be stuck? Who would you rather be stuck with during COVID? We got COVID part two, family or friends? See, I'm going to go with friends because the, because friends are the family you choose. Your family, you're stuck with. You're born into that, man. Some family members, I don't even want to be in the same room. <laughs> so I'm going with friends all day long if I'm locked up again due to COVID. Oh, man, that's too funny. Uh, for me, I mean, either one I'm, I think I'll be fine with, with friends and our family. I've been with family for the last year and a half locked in, uh, my wife, my kids. So friends too, other than my buddies from high school, cause we can get violent. The ones I talked about. So this group of friends, the one friend that, that slipped the, violent. what'd you say? Violent. What violent. violent. We fight each other. Cause we can't, you know, we still act like we still in high school. That's why. Okay. This is what we do. Okay. This is for example, what I'm talking about. So, like I said, this was my junior. So I transferred school as my junior year. I went from Omaha North to Omaha Central. And, you know, all my friends when during the transfer, most of my friends obviously were football players. Yep. So I got Andy, Jono, and Damian. Those are like the main crew members that I'm talking about here. We will go over to Andy's house and play Tecmo Bowl, Street Fighter, Super Tech Mobile, you know, play little playoff mini tournaments between the four of each other. Win or lose, for whatever reason, a fight would break out. <laughs> a, a wrestling WWF freestyle fight would break out. Andy's mom, Debbie, love her to death. Love her. She put up with our, you know what. We broke their screen door so many times that she just stopped fixing it. <laughs> because we were throwing each other through the, the screen window or screen door that was part of the front door because they would get irritated. Oh, man, you beat me. Then boom, ah, you're going out the front door. <laughs> okay. So those four, those three and me being the fourth, we go over Jono's house. We play NHL 94. Obviously, I don't know how to play real life hockey. What, what makes you think I know how to play Nintendo hockey? Um, we'll be play it. I get my butt kicked, and then we're in straight up battle royale in the basement. I think I body slammed John on one time where his foot hit the ceiling first, <laughs> and his mom was like, "Oh, you boys, we're breaking doors. We got holes in the wall. Oh, you're just being, you're just getting all that young energy out." Well, I love Patty to death. She's awesome. She's amazing. She put up with our, you know what? Um, so. Not not that I not that I would hang out with them. It just I'm not hanging out at my house because we ain't breaking nothing here. We break something here, I'm gonna break all of them off. They know that I'm bigger than all of them. They know this. Wow. So just so you know, if you have any of those guys, John o, Damon, Andy, with me, and I'm coming to your house, just put all your good stuff that you don't want to get broken away. Open the screen door. Open the screen door. <laughs> I would say family, by the way, because <sighs> I would be afraid I'd be with my friends too long, and then we'd just be all up on each other, like, and I'd be like, I don't even want to hang out with you guys anymore. <laughs> this is too dumb. Um, uh, all right, there you go, guys. That's this week's This or That. Cool. That was fun, Ben. I like your mind. I like the way your brain works coming up with that list. That was probably the first Outside of me, no, that was like the first or the second, maybe. I think John, you did the this or that list one time, didn't you? You don't think you did? Oh, okay. Well, that was the first episode seventy-six. Ben, this or that, mine. All right, and so we're going into game releases. 
release dates. It's time for the game releases. Game, game releases. releases. I like the dog. Is that a dog that you put in there? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so I don't know if the dogs are in this video game. I've heard about it. It's a big game. I haven't played it yet, but a lot of my uh, players play it. A few of my players play it, and I know people around the world do. Is Valheim. So Valheim has a big update this week, which is tomorrow. Is Valheim Hearth and Home. Hearth. So that's Hearth, not Heart. Hearth and Home update. The release date is tomorrow. You got shields, you got food, and you got more. So, the Valheim Hearth and I'm gonna drop my phone. Sorry. Um, <laughs> a Hearth and Home release date has been confirmed of tomorrow. So, the first major update for the Viking theme survival game has arrived for September 16th. Those of you who can't wait to find out more about, are in luck. So, when you went through all the teaser videos and all the developer updates for the last several months and listed every bit of information of the Valheim Hearth and Home Update. So here you go. So to give an idea, the Valheim Hearth and Home Update will bring us heaps of gold, a neat little oven, <laughs> and an onion farm. There you go. So how about that for an update? You get an oven and you get an onion farm. You ever wanted an onion farm, Ben? John, I, I love I do love onions. You know, they are definitely good for you. So also there are there may or may not be a raven or a horse involved. Those are a bit still unclear. They're trying to figure that out. So how here's everyone <clears throat> everything we know about Hearth and Home so far. So Hearth and Home release we know the date. It's tomorrow. Um, and you got developer Iron Gate promised a while ago that Valheim. Hearth and Home would arrive, obviously, in the third quarter of 2021, and we're about that at that time. So back in February, Iron Gate co-founder Henrik Tornvich explained in an interview with PC Gamer that the team would focus on its bugs first and get those fixed due to Valheim's massive rise in popularity and the relatively small size of the Iron Gate team, which, as Tolvich uh, points out, is only five people. Wow. That's a small dev team. Wow. Um, I'm pretty sure Clint doesn't have that. He probably has around at least 50 developers <laughs> along with himself to help develop Madden over the months they have, the 10 to 12 months they have to develop that game year, uh, year over year. So uh, Iron Gate needs some help. Um, so don't be mad at Iron Gate and Valheim because they only have five people working on this game. Okay, that's amazing. So there are a lot of... Things in need of improvement, Tor Torvesk confirmed that the team would start working on Hearth and Home as soon as they felt ready. I think they have the right to say that. There's only five. I think six, including him. Um, so, Val uh, Valheim, Hearth and Home, shields. So, the Hearth and Home update would include some shield modifications. For starters, you may choose to play more definitely defensively by equipping a tower shield. The tower shield will be stronger and have a higher knockback power compared to the Valheim shields and is therefore, hopefully, when facing larger groups of enemies. All right. So naturally, the tower shield is rather slow. If you prefer faster combat, you should try the smaller, bulkier shield instead. It doesn't have the same blocking power, but you'll always be able to parry, you know, counter uh, incoming attacks. And then also no problem there if you happen to be fun of the current round shields in Valheim though you're still able to use them the shield type offers a bit of both so it is a great option if you can't decide whether between the heavier tower shield or the lighter bulkier uh, tower shield so there you go and then last little update and then I get moving on passing on to you or Ben so next one in uh, Valheim Hearth and Home is the new food and meat and bulk parries, which I don't even know what a bulk parry tastes like. I would love to know what that tastes like. So before Hearth and Home, every animal species dropped the same type of raw meat. Both those days will soon be over. So when the update arrives, wolves will only drop wolf meat, of course. Uh, lox will only drop lox meat. And deer... Well, only drop deer meat. So it kind of, if you played uh, 
Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. If you know what you're talking about, when you killed an animal, that, that little meat kind of appears. So obviously it used to, other things used to appear when you killed a fox or a deer. It wasn't what, 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 what you just killed, I guess. I guess that's the update there. Um, so the different types of meats um, <clears throat> have different stats, which will turn always different recipes. So obviously you get to cook them up because that when you cook up the meats, that helps you obviously recover your hearts, your, your health recovery meter there. So speaking of recipes, you may also upgrade your cauldron. That means your oven or the little big pot like the witch's pot. Of cooking in Valheim and so furthermore you may build an oven like they mentioned and or bake your own bread and pie guys so that's just a little update from Valheim hearth and home that's going to be available for download tomorrow and you can go to games radar to read the rest of the article it, it tells on all the other updates that's going to be in the game but for that shields meat and then cooking your own food there you go Big update for Valheim and uh, this week's game releases for myself. Ben, John, what do you have? All right, for me, Season 8 of Fortnite is now out on PC, PS5, Xbox Series X, Xbox One, and the Switch that came out back on September 13th. But the alien invasion is now over, and Fortnite's island is full of cubes. Season 8 of the Battle Royale second chapter just launched, and it's called Simply Cubed. The premise is pretty strange, according to Epic, who uh, makes the game. The cubes they used to power the giant alien... Uh, mothership have now been set free to wreak havoc on the island as with all new seasons the update means a combination of new characters locations weapons and even portals to transport players to a monster filled realm now the biggest change in chapter eight appears to be a new element called the sideways which is described as a dark uh, malevolent malevolent monster filled malevolent yeah th and there you go I think Bam. Field uh, reality, which is spread by the cubes. Now, players can access it via portals. In addition to the monsters, it features low gravity and no building, and it will impact different island locations. Players will be able to get a new crafting component from these areas to create super powered sideways weapons. This season also brings back some classic guns, including the automatic sniper rifle and the harpoon gun. Now, there also appears to be a newfound focus on collaboration between players who can now work together to enforce the island. Here's how Epic describes it with fellow loopers across the island. Uh, donate the bars you earn to construction sites where you want to see turret stations built up. In the future, we'll need you to come together and decide which new weapons to develop, which ones to involve, and more. And of course, with a new season means a new battle pass to purchase. And this time around, that includes the addition of characters to unlock, like Carnage, a monster hunter. Ooh, I did see him. Torin and yes. Let's see, Carnage or Torin? Carnage. Carnage. All right. So you got Carnage. You got a monster hunter called Torin and a soldier named JP Chimpansky. Also a buff uh, unicorn called Fabio Sparkle Mane. Wow. It looks like a ripped uh, <laughs> unicorn. unicorn. Yeah, it looks kind of cool, actually. So that is your rundown of Season 8, Chapter 8 of Fortnite. That is now out on PC, PS5, Xbox wow. Series X, Xbox One, and Switch. John uh, Obvious. All right, my game release this week, fellas, is called Project Winter. Project Winter, mm -hmm. and that is for the Nintendo Switch. It is also for the PS4. It comes out tomorrow. What is Project Winter? Well, to me, in the description, description at the Nintendo website, it sounds kind of like among us but it's nothing like the graphics or anything like that in among, mm. among us this is what they're right the perfect game to backstab your friends project winter is a multi is definitely device. among us yeah <laughs> focusing on social <coughs> and survival so you get to betray your friends in an eight person multiplayer game focused on that uh those two terms social deception and survival basically here's what it is like there are some traitors. Uh, yeah, they got the hidden roles among all the survivors. The survivors are just trying to survive, right? And to call a rescue vehicle for help. Um, but there are the unidentified traitors. They know each other, but not the survivors. They don't know the survivors don't know who they are. And their goal is to stop the survivors from escaping without being identified and killed. So it's communication, it's teamwork, and it's also betrayal and deception. It's called Project Winter. And it definitely looks fun. It definitely looks fun. 
It definitely sounds like Among Us for sure. Yeah. Because people are always stabbing you in the back, cutting your head off with them little 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 spacesuit creatures walking around. It's like map. a little bit of a grown up version of Among Us, I guess, in the sense that it's not like the graphics graphics wise right. look like they're um, kind of a, in a different different league of their own. And it's only nineteen ninety nine, by the way. Oh yeah. That's nice. Yeah. So to the Twitch chat real quick for game releases. Big B says beta for Vanguard uh, is out tomorrow on Xbox. And then uh, Eeyore says, which is Andy from Gaming Generations, guys. We had him on here. Um, he says Kevin Returns. I think that's to the Fortnite reference there, Ben. <clears throat> and that was the, the name of the first cube uh, name was Kevin. And then he also says Carnage is available at level 100 battle pass. So that means none of us qualify because we are noobs at Fortnite. <laughs> so that on we're not on that level. We don't we're not on that skin level. You know what I'm saying? Um, and then uh, it says he says I'm still hoping for the anime characters like Nuratu and or Guko from Dragon Ball Z to be on there. And uh, trying to think anybody else, any good other comments. And then also Big B said, said what I said. It sounds like a Among Us ripoff <laughs> uh, for Project. What's it called? Project. What's your? What's that? The Project gaming Winter. Project, Project Winter. Winter. All right, yep. there we go. All right, so uh, nice game releases, guys. Thank you very much. Now let's get on to what's on stream, Ben. Row, row, row your boat gently up the... Ah, uh, sorry. Excuse me. It's time for what's on stream. Woo! What is... Oh, man, I love it. I gotta do something. I haven't worked out in over a week. It's driving me crazy and batty, so I'm getting back in there soon so my body get, can then get the full recovery of feeling healthy. So what... Uh, I'm talking about this week on What's On Stream. It is a series that's actually on season two, so it has been around since 2019. And it has the heartthrob, Jason Momoa, uh, plays Bubba Voss. And now, season two, which we binged it all up, me being you know under the weather, able to binge a lot of stuff lately. So we, it's this TV show that's on Apple TV. It's called C. And so it's in season two. And season two brings in David Batista, Edo Voss, Boba's long, I won't say long lost brother, but just brother that just haven't been mentioned yet um, to the series. So this is season two is starring, like I said, Jason Momoa, David Batista, and Alfrey, Alfrey Woodard uh, streaming on Apple Plus. Mankind has lost the sense of sight. So a war for the future is coming. You can access this through most of your devices, especially if you have any, you know, on your iPhone, your cell phone. Um, and so this series, like I said, mankind had lost sight. And now in season one, there were two twin babies born with sight. So sight has not been on planet Earth in this series for almost 200 years. All right. So it is modern time. So during modern time of 2020, that's when the planet has lost sight. It was a something. I think it was a virus that affected every human being, and anyone that could that were found alive were now blind. And so, 200 years later, these babies are born. Two babies are born that have sight. And of course, this is like you know at this time now the world has basically got top you know brought back to the st almost almost stone age because they're believing in you know. You know, stories and gods and demons and what have you. So that's where the belief is now back in the world is saying that, you know, when something happens, the gods put this on us. You know, we got to deal with this because we smited the gods. That type of conversation is going on in this TV series called C. Written, I believe part of it is written and some of it is directed by Jason Momoa. So he's done an outstanding job in writing and directing and also acting in this movie. Um, pretty good pretty solid cast and if it, if anything that reminds me of any other medieval show that we watched over in the last 10 years uh, maybe game of thrones it has that game of thrones type of feel where obviously people that have power are tripping 
because they have all the power. They think they could do whatever they want to people and get away with it. And that's not the way, you know, you know how things are. When, when there's a king or a queen doing something they shouldn't be doing, they only get away with it for so long. And then what happens? Reality snaps back. Bam! So that happens. So season one, you, you watch that. You get introduced to um, uh, Bubba Voss and his family. And he is a he's the chief of his tribe. And he's leading them, obviously, to safety. He's battling against other tribes that are obviously trying to take over their uh, their land. But also they find out that they are harboring these two twin babies that have sight and are raising them. So obviously they want these babies because they obviously feel that they... Whoever has sight will be eventually the power uh, tribe on the planet. Because if you can see, and you're battling against people that can't see, uh, you, you might have a leg up. So just uh, just think about that and watching the series. It's very cool when you watch them fight and the way Momoa, you know, you, if you always go to his uh, social media or you see a video online with him training, how to, you know, doing the fight and training and stuff like that, it's pretty neat because he's doing it. You know basically with his eyes closed and uh, because he obviously has to simulate him being blind in some of these action sequences and so that's very impressive we already know he has the chops you know he plays aquaman and he does other uh, very action filled characters in his uh his acting uh bevy or i say portfolio basically so if you i say for all the ladies out there you got jason momoa um there you go you're welcome <laughs> uh, and you got David Batista for all you WWF or WWE fans. Bam! You got Batista jumping in season two. So you got two season up. Um, the episodes are anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour long, so they're pretty long, um, but they're well worth it. And like I said, a Game of Thrones feel. You know, you got the hierarchy of kings and queens and, you know, uh, peasants down here, but then also it's that, you know, still modern, you know, you still see, you know, cities and and uh, old framework of buildings in the, some of the areas they're walking through in some of the scenes. So, but it's a great series, two seasons up. Check it out. It's on Apple TV. It is called C. Check it out. <laughs> you like how I did that? Yeah. The podcast people won't get that one, but the Twitch people will. <laughs> so I got a few options this week for my what's on stream. Uh, any sports fans out there, ESPN has got a new 30 for 30 that dropped last night, or at least the first two episodes did. It's called The Once Upon a Time in Queens, and I watched them both live last night. Talks about the 1986 Mets and their really wild ride to a World Series title, how that team got put together, you know, the years before it, building the team, and then obviously what would happen afterwards. I'm sure they're going to highlight here with really the destruction of that team, but it's really good. It's called Once Upon a Time in Queens, and the season 11, I believe, of Curb Your Enthusiasm comes out next month on HBO, and there's so much talk about that show and Larry David specifically. I'm like, I should probably start watching this show. So I started binging Curb all the way back to season one. I think I'm on season three. And then an update from your guys' is what's on stream last week. Yeah. I yeah. binged Clickbait over the weekend. Ooh. Oh, okay. Good, good show. Good. Yep. Real good. So I saw every episode, so I'm ready. Okay. Can I, can I, I have a question about Clickbait real quick. Uh-oh. I'm watching the final episode. Spoilers upcoming. So if you haven't seen Clickbait and you want to, you should probably... Yeah, I've already seen it. Yeah, I've finished it. There's so many things that wouldn't happen in a real-life police situation that that, that that show just overlooks. Yeah. You know example. what I mean? Example. Give us an example. Well, number one, that the two, the, the wife and the sister of Entourage Guy... Yep. Um... Are just they just they go with the police and they're right there in a standoff like they're literally right there standing there in a standoff and and the police would just be like hey bring them over here put them in the harm's way and we could possibly have a you know shots fired here number one that would never happen number two there are times when they're standing like in front of police officers with their guns drawn. So like there are police officers in the back, like I've got my gun. And then the people in the foreground, like you would never put yourself in true. that situation in real life. Nope. Very nope. true. And, Very and true. For some odd reason, they would put them on the ground. Right, John? Yeah. Yes. Probably. Yeah. I'm with you there. 
Well, well, then here's the other thing. Okay, you guys stay with me here. I'm staying with you. The guy whose sister committed suicide. Yep. He captures um, the, the main guy, right? Correct. Now, Dan- when they're Danny, showing whatever. him the photo, like, this is you, man. This is you with my sister, man. And then he <clears> says, well, wait, that's Photoshop. Remember that part? Mm-hmm. Then the sun sets and everything. Yep, yep. Why does that photo exist and how, think about this, how is that photo used? So if you're the catfish person, the lady, right? Right. You have this manipulated photo of you and the person you're speaking to. Are you sending that to them saying, this is what I wish we would be like? Because that person has never seen you. They, they've never been with you in person. So how does that photo prove any, how would that photo prove anything? How would that photo even exist? And who would be giving that photo to who? Well, see, I could put two and two together on that and say that, you know, yeah, I did put it together and say, hey, this could be us someday. Right. You could send so for example, you could send it to the, to the girl that committed suicide, right? But because her brother didn't know a lot about that relationship she was in and she committed suicide, she couldn't explain to her brother, I never met that person. In okay, person. so so how are they communicating? Are, are, Through the app. On that chat? Yes, on it's on that app. chat. So on that if app. you send that photo on that app, you say there is there is a log of 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 the conversation, and that conversation was used throughout that TV show. Like that was put on the news. That conversation that that guy found on that phone. Would the conversation explain the photo? Like yes and no. <clears throat> So from the people that don't know logging into that account, they'll see the photo, but then for the person catfishing and obviously editing, because they had he had she had access to his uh, personal work computer. If you remember, yeah. the yeah. Uh, the one the lady that was cat, the older lady that was catfishing, that's the yeah. person that was basically the twister that basically put the the twist in the story um, for everyone. Yeah. The boy, the brother, the sister that was thought she was dating this guy <clears throat> and the guy who basically got framed by the cat his his co-worker who was catfishing him two people out there in the world which is why this show is crazy and amazing it's like wow it's like the person that you really didn't think of having effect in this problem is the main person it's an older lady that you wouldn't even be to think about <clears throat> and like john said spoiler alert so these are all spoilers if you <laughs> if you better you better fast forward it through this podcast cause exactly because you're gonna be disappointed i'm talking about it I yeah but it's uh it's a good I, that's another one i meant to talk about last week but i think somebody i think you know me and john we talked about it last week so we already hit on it together so yeah very good series well, I thought to myself too uh, quickly is that that relationship between the main character that ends up, you know, committing the crime, the catfisher, the catfishy, whatever it may be, you can tell that her and her husband do not have that strong of a relationship anymore. Kind of seems like they grew apart, right? So when the entourage dude breaks it or not, I oh. guess he's breaking, he's led into the house. Why does the husband just kill him? Right. It's not like he's madly in love with his wife anymore. So now he's going to kill a dude. For this yeah. woman you know, fall in love with? Well, even when the yeah. um, entourage guy, I know you have a name. I <laughs> his name is, I think one of his name is Danny. That was the oh, screen yeah, name. Yeah, one of his, yeah, one of Danny. his catfish names. And it, why would he, like, let's say I knew Ben was doing this, right? Like, Ben, you're the old lady and I'm the catfish guy. Or I'm the guy, um, the entourage guy. Um, like, I... I just got kidnapped. Like, I'll get to you eventually. But I think my priority right now is contacting the police and being safe. Yes. Not yes. walking across town to a house, like, to find that house and then drink water and be like, like, why wouldn't he just go to the police right away and not run to this person's house? He obviously right. trusted her. But he knew. He knew at that moment. He didn't know 100%. Why- he came there to, like, ask questions to find out. Yeah, and, and that was that was his pretty much that was his demise because yeah. I wouldn't have gone there. I, I, I know, yeah, I would have did. I agree with you. I would have not have went to any of my coworkers. No, especially no, yeah, 
You go to the police right, station, yeah, I just got kidnapped. Okay, now if I was down in Madison for a night and I got a little drunk, okay, I'm going to call one of you two. That's different. Now, if I'm kidnapped and I've been missing for, what was it, 10 days? First place I'm going is to the police department. I might even track down the FBI facility. <laughs> like, hey, <laughs> y'all looking for me? <laughs> I can tell you everything. What, what the heck is going on? I am not. Oh yeah, that one. That was, but that's, but that's, that's, uh, that's Hollywood writing. You know, because obviously they no story happens if he doesn't go where he should have went. This is what we used to talk about with my turning point and horror movies. Take your butt to the police department. Don't go. And now, now you're alive. Exactly. You a different story. Yeah. It's so frustrating because overall the series is so good, and there's just a few key yeah. things to miss. And it's like, how do you miss that? Do you not have like a continuity team as part of the 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 shoot that's making sure everything pieces together and flow? It's right. It is. It is right. So oh, to by the, the way. Oh. Uh, real quick. By the way, uh, Tomorrow War was my pick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's where. <laughs> It was on Amazon. It came out in July. It's got Chris Pratt. Chris Pratt, yeah. The future. The whole uh, world is fighting these aliens, but there's like time travel. And from 50 future. years to, from now, right? Yeah. Yeah, have to serve your seven days. And uh, I, I was entertained. Oh, Lord. Anyway, back to clickbait. Back to clickbait. So to the Twitch chat, we had a lot of people chiming in on this one. So Steen137 says, Raisin Canaan on Stars is pretty good. So that was like a, a spinoff of Power. 50 cent series um okay. and i believe that's been going actually i've caught a couple episodes of that first of season raising canaan pretty good um jfk says clickbait is uh <laughs> the whole the whole plot was dumb raising canaan keenan or raising Kane is uh good and true detective season one is good as well season one i love yeah it. true detective season one yeah i remember that that was with uh woody harrelson Right? Woody Harrelson. It was on HBO. Man. Yeah, it was fantastic, man. And then Big B says uh, several things. They said, Big B says, did he finish Who Killed Sarah? <laughs> <laughs> you, oh, knew that, you knew that was coming. Was uh, coming. I have no idea. And then he says, so, so many catfishing situations, it's crazy. And then Ben is an old lady now. I don't know where that came from. That was from. I said I was the old lady when he was laying out the scene from Click. Oh, okay. I'm like, where that one come from, Big B? Yeah, he he's hit. He's on both of y'all now. He got you. <laughs> he's got two. He got something on both of y'all. And then Steen one three seven says Wu Tang, an American saga. I gotta watch that. That's on Hulu. Okay. But I'm mad right now. So yeah, I gotta watch that. I was trying to create my Hulu account. It wouldn't let me. I'm like, dang it. Come on, man. Why y'all hating on me? And my emails, they said my email didn't work or something. I'm like, y'all being haters. Hulu, mm -hmm. Hulu don't want me to sign up. What? Haters. <laughs> haters. Hey, that's the end of the stream. That's the end of the podcast. Hey, great show. My buddies, Ben and John. Um, Clint, outstanding guest to have him on. We know we'll be able to have him back year over year. Because it's going to be a new, another Madden. And then whenever NCAA comes out, we're definitely having him on to ask any questions um, and uh, bring us up on the details of NCAA college football. <clears throat> and that when that hits the shelves and the downloadable content for uh, consoles and PC as well. So uh, I want to thank you to him and his team over at EA for being on the show and obviously bringing out a new game, a better game every year. That's not an easy thing to do. Um, definitely, definitely dealing with what we all had to deal with last year with uh, COVID and everything else going on in the world. So I appreciate to uh, Clint Oldenburg and his team at EA again. And then of course, also appreciate John and Ben for jumping on um, out of your work day and hard, you know, to get on this and talk and hang out and, you know, blabber about some fun stuff. This or that game releases and uh, trending topics and what's on stream. And we're going to be back next week. We have... The, Ber the Vereen brothers are on, Shane and Brock, that are also in the area of video games with me. They are uh, part of the biz development team with ESTV, that's Esports Television. 
uh, based out of Los Angeles, California, run by Eric Yoon, who is the CEO. So Shane and Brock will be on, and we could talk a little video games with them. I know they got a lot of Madden uh, trash talking amongst each other, being brothers. You know, they go at it. And I believe, I think Shane said uh, he's the, the dominant one in Madden. But we'll set the record straight when we have him on the show next week to talk a little video games and the world they're living in now. Um, and so, everybody, if you're tuning in, thank you for tuning in to the podcast and to Amon Green TV here on Twitch. We'll be back next week for a new this or that. Uh, game releases, what's on stream, and obviously our guests, Shane and Brock Vereen, that talk about what's going on in their world and also what's going on in the video game industry with new trending topics and things of that nature. And, uh, Ben, let people know. Uh, where they could find us, download us, and then why they need to rate and review us when they listen to our podcast. Yeah, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, wherever you consume your audio these days. You can find us. Just search Amon Green's Gamers Lounge, and you can usually rate or review. I know for sure you can on Apple Podcasts. Pretty sure you can do that across all the platforms. But let people know what you think about what we're doing here. If you're enjoying it, let us know. If you don't like it, let us know that, too. We look at those things, you know. Rate and review us. We really would appreciate that. So thank you very much. And appreciate everyone tuning in. Everybody in the chat. Big B, JFK, Big Boom, Howard, Eeyore, some of the usual. Some, I say the greenies that were in the house. So appreciate you very much. And I'll catch you next week on the Mind Greens Gamers Lounge. Peace.